One way to get started on a project is to find a simple like elevation view, looking straight at the side of it or maybe straight from the top of something. Map it out into a graph with x, y points. And I like actually using Excel for this instead of AutoCAD because it's really easy to change around any data points that get entered wrong without having to go through um, using the modify tools in AutoCAD. And it's just really clear to, to do this. Okay, so I, I give you two different files. One is an Excel file with just a few example images that have been started for you. Another file is a Word document and it has some instructions for how to search for some good images. And if you scroll down, it also has some graph paper that you can use. So if you take one of your images, and what I have is some see-through graph paper that you can move around on the image, then line up. So you can, you can resize this grid paper so that the the grids can, can scale up or down, however works best for your project. And then if you can kind of move it around so that the nodes line up fairly well with the sky, the next thing to do is to sketch out, and this is where it's probably going to be best to do this by hand. Just, and for whatever object it is, if you can get a basic outline to get started with and get the proportions right. So this is something that's really nice to do off of, off of an image. This also trains your mind to think in terms of Cartesian coordinates. And so truss structures are really good for this. They have some repeating patterns that are good. And... Um, you can, there's houses or here's a crane, but you can start to see some patterns that form in these. So I have some of these that are done for you and some that are blank. Here's um, a bike. If you have a curved surface, you can put in equations for that. So the radius is equal to x squared plus y squared kind of a deal and walk around each half of those curved surfaces with, with equations. But however you want to do it, if you can get a series of x, y coordinates, you can then actually copy these things straight into AutoCAD. Okay, so let's walk through this and I'll show you how to graph it out in Excel, how to get all of those x, y points in there right, and, and then I'll let you choose what object to do this to. You can Either choose something out of the Excel file here that's already given for you, or you can um, get your own object, throw some graph paper over it and, and plot it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to split this into line segments. If I bring this in as a line, I want to make sure that I'm not making one line over another. So if I maybe choose this outline section first, so I'll just go from left to right, and I'll walk around the entire circle of it. And then next I'll come in and start filling in the inside of the truss. So maybe I can get a couple different line segments to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a point of zero, zero, and then I'll just walk right around. So five, two, 10, four, as I'm doing this, I'm actually going to start up a, um, a scatter plot here. And even though I haven't filled these points in, I'm going to go ahead and, and give myself a large database for this. Okay, so I'm going to go to Insert, and there's a bunch of different graphs in here. The scatter plot is right in here, and I'm actually going to choose this guy that has the the data points connected with lines. And so this way, as I fill in those data points, they are actually going to be showing up on this graph. So I can see as I'm putting points in if I have those points in there correctly or not. 
Okay, so now I'm going to jump all the way up from 10-4 to 15-10. And you can see my scatter plot is, is following right along. You might have to rescale that graph a little bit. So here's 25, 2, and 30, 0. And then let's see, we, then we can come right back. I'll just make that, that last bit over here all the way back to 0, 0. OK, so here's the, the basic outline. And again, you can take that scatter plot and kind of tug it around up and down. To start a new line segment, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to skip. I'll leave these blank. And then I'm going to start my new line segment down here. These draw tools, Excel is um, very similar to AutoCAD in that you can right click anywhere in the ribbon and customize the tools that are in there. So add in those drawing tools if those aren't in there yet. There's some programming tools in here and all kinds of fun stuff that don't automatically turn up. OK, I'll go ahead and, and use a different color. So I'm going to start over here, go up, over, up, over. So I'm trying to make one continuous line segment where I'm not drawing lines over the top of one another. So this will be my blue segment here. So I'll start with 5, 0. And just walk around. 5, 2, 10, 0, 10, 4, 15, 0. And you can see why it's, it's really important to maybe sketch this out first and just get it all sorted on a piece of paper that will make it so much easier to, to figure out where all these points are going to start with a sketch. OK, so let me show if I got one of these numbers in here wrong, like maybe I accidentally hit 25 instead, you'll see it on this graph. So that's one of the reasons that it, it might be just easier to start this process in Excel where you have everything right in front of you, clearly displayed. You can change those x, y coordinates as you need to until everything is in there just right. And I guess our, our last little bit here, we need one line from 15, 0 up to the top at 15, 10. OK, so now we have everything mapped out onto x, y coordinates. We have it graphed. Our graph matches what we want. The next thing we want to do is to pull these into AutoCAD. To pull this into AutoCAD, I need data not is two different columns, but I need pairs of x, y numbers. So let me go ahead and um, can move things over a little bit, give myself some room. And I'm going to go ahead and use the um, concat function. So I can either type it in here, or it's probably easier just to come up here to formulas. And let's see, this is a character manipulation tool. So it's going to take columns of information and put it into one column. This is great for like email lists. You can pull strings apart or you can push strings together with this thing. So if I click on it through the formula text tool, this will actually give me a nice little menu that will help me enter information. So this pulls up this function arguments. It fills in my function for me. And what I want is I want to put this text and then I want to have a comma. And then I want to have this next text. So this will be 0, comma, 0. And I can keep going. I can type in any kind of text I want in this. But for now, that's, that's all we need is just right there. OK, so I'm going to hit OK. And now I have this nice pair of numbers instead. I'm going to go ahead and copy this down so I have that for all of my points. <coughs> 
Okay, one more thing. If I double click on it, you can see that it doesn't just have those two numbers in it. It has the function and this equation that could be confusing to AutoCAD. It just wants the numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight this column. And I'm going to change this so that it is nothing but numbers inside of there. So Control C will copy something or you can right click and say copy. And then over here, one column over, there's a couple of different paste options. Like you can paste just the values, or you can paste the, the formulas, or I can mess around with formatting. And I want to make sure that I am just placing the values. Another way to do that besides just right clicking and going to the different paste options is to say Control Alt B. And this gives you another nice little menu that you can decide what piece of information you actually want to paste. Okay, so I'm going to say I only want the values. I don't want formulas or formats or anything else, just very simple text values. So now when I double click on this, I don't get a whole bunch of functions under there. It is nothing but a number in there. And this is what I can bring into CAD. I'm going to copy this over one section at a time. So again, Control C. And this is what we can bring into AutoCAD. Making sure that my dynamic input is off, that we're feeding it information with respect to our user coordinate system. I'm going to go ahead and start up the polyline command. So polyline automatically joins adjacent line segments. So you can see it's asking for our starting point. And right here, rather than just giving it one starting point, I'm going to go ahead and say Control V. And it has just brought in that first chunk of data. I can go back and forth. Here's a Here's the next chunk of data, escape. Again, deselects what you had. I'll left mouse click, control C to copy. And I don't have to type in polyline again. I can just hit enter and it brings up that previous command again. So I'm going to hold my cursor inside the command line again and say control V. And there we go, escape gets us out of that command. And here's our last pair of numbers, control C. And again, I'm going to just hit enter and it brings up that last command, control V. And we have our Polynesian truss structure brought into there. Okay, so play around with um, you can either use one of the example structures that's in here, or you can pull in your sketch from your project that you did or your, your box diagram, but pull something in, slap a piece of grid paper over the top of it, and remember you can move this around and resize it so that you can get it to line up as best you can with the features on your sketch and go through the just the major parts of it. If you can start with an outline, that's going to be the best. So, so sketch the points on it. Put a XY coordinate system. I like to just take the most left point and make that my zero, zero point and measure everything off of that left point. OK, and then by the end of it, you'll be thinking in terms of XY graphing for everything.